What's up guys, Justin Casey here from Elysium Risk Management. Okay, so today what we are going to do is we're going to take a very quick look at developer tools, okay, and how we can manually extract data from Instagram profiles. Um, within OSINT, especially when you start out in OSINT or if you haven't got a strong background in coding, anything like that, um, what we can do is, we, what we usually always do is use other people's tools okay there's a huge brilliant OSINT community out there and some great great um, developers who create some amazing tools that help us to do our job more efficiently and easier which is always a good thing but we can't always rely on third party tools because oftentimes what can happen is maybe the the person maintaining this tool moves on to a new project Okay, and eventually over time the tool becomes outdated, no longer works. Maybe the service and um, the application that it's working with um, changes their API access, all sorts of reasons. Okay, so it's it's actually a pretty common thing that one day a tool that you've been using for months and months and months and you absolutely love just goes down, just disappears. Okay, it just doesn't work anymore. And um, so when this happens, we need to be able to kind of understand not only understand how to do it manually ourselves okay and that's good because it also gives us um, an insight into what the tool is doing how does the tool operate and um, what's the magic sauce that's happening okay which is always good because we always want to continue learning okay and that's one of my favorite parts of um let's say the cyber sector okay whether that's cyber security whether it's OSINT anything it's very dynamic it's never static everything is constantly changing which forces us to be more innovative and continue to learn okay which it, it's a never-ending um cycle rabbit hole let's say that you fall down so i love it but anyways let's get started okay so here we are taking a look at the european security academy instagram page and what we can do is we can right click and head over here to inspect okay and when we click on inspect we can see all this and to most people when they see it for the first time it's crazy and it's scary and what the hell is this hacking stuff Okay, it's not hacking, don't worry. It's just essentially, it's it's the structural elements to the web page. Okay, but what we are very much interested in is the network. Okay, let's just reload this. Okay, the network tab. Because what is happening, okay, um, so what is happening is this is how the browser interacts with the server. Okay, with the server. So what it's saying is, hey, get me this this domain this is what i want go and get this for me okay i want instagram.com and i want the file eusecond.com or well eusecond forward slash eusecond as you can see that's that's what it's gone and gone and gotten for us but how computer actually works is the browser will check first it will check our local host uh, dns records and i'll say hey have you you guys got instagram.com this domain because this is how it sees it. it sees it in ip addresses and port numbers as we can see the port number at the end there is 443 can you guess what that means that means it's https so it's not encrypt it's encrypted which is great um so um it's it will check our local host records on it if we don't have it there, it will go to the DNS server. The DNS server will say, hey, yeah, I have a domain called Instagram.com. Here's the IP address. Here, here's how you can connect to it. So when it connects, it then says, okay, yeah, and this is what I want here. Okay, so if we click on that, and as we can see, it's HTML, okay? And over here, we have the status code. This is the status code. So 200, which is green, which obviously is okay. So that's our status, okay? So this is the get request. And when we click on the get request, we can see the headers. We can see, I'm not going to go into the cookies. Uh, we can see our request, our response time. And so we're going to go into response, okay? So this is what we want. This is what we asked. What what response did we get? Let's go on to raw data, raw data, raw data. So here you can see this is what it went and got. Okay, so it went here and said, yeah, here, this, this is what you want. This is it, okay? And when we look at that, if that should look familiar maybe to some but all that is is our source code okay so it's the html code so it goes to that ip address and say hey this is what i want and it says okay yeah here's here's the source code for that okay and then it's translated to our lovely html beautifying capabilities and it gives us this nice visual um visual web web page so what we are interested in here, let's just 
paste this in. Not that one. I'm going to say API v1. So API v1 feed user. Hmm. Where are we? Okay, this is what we want here, okay? So it's saying, okay, this is the file that I want, okay? I want the API v1 user web profile info, okay? I want the web profile information for this username, okay? So it said, okay, go and get me this. So it went and it got it and the server gave it back and it starts 200. So it gave us back something, which means it's okay. So here we can see starts okay. And this is in our response, obviously. And we can see that's JSON. So from here, we can begin to open up. And let me just bring this up for us. And um, we can begin to open up this and see more and more data about this page. Okay. External links. Is it restricted? Is it blocked? Um, ID numbers. And um, this is the user count. Okay. So 26,000 followers. Um, we can see the full name. Has it got clips? Yes. Okay. Is it has it blocked viewers? No. Um, is it a business account? Yes. Okay. The, this is the information. Some of you might recognize this, and um, but the, if you've used tour party tools, this is generally the the information that comes back when we use our tour party tools. It goes and gets this JSON file and spits it back for us, and um, which is good. But like I said, we need to understand how to do this manually. And when we are investigating Instagram accounts, okay, some of the things that can be important, and um, maybe this is a profile picture and it's not the best quality because as we know, they compress Instagram, Facebook, they compress images and um, before they upload them. But here we can see a link to the high definition. So let me just copy value. We'll open up and drop it in. So we have a high definition profile picture that can help us. Like I said, maybe if it's a if it's a person, okay, and then we can use that for um, facial recognition software or for reverse imaging, something like that, okay, or just for documentation. Um, again, we can begin to go down, and as you go down, you will see various different elements. Okay, so how many videos? There's 71 videos. Okay, what's the username? And um, the count. So there's 919 posts. And if we wanted, we can begin to start opening up our objects. Where are we? Edges. So our object nodes. So here we see object nodes. There should be 11 of them to start because that's what loads here. Okay. So essentially there are posts. So if we go to object one. And we open it up. We have the ID. Okay. So we can document that. Uh, so we can get back to it. And we have the display URL. I'm just going to select all copy and then we'll open it up in a new page and there we go okay we have a huge much better quality image okay so we can then save that image right click and save for documentation for for anything whatever the purpose may be okay so we can begin to extract um each each post so that's just a quick look at our developer tools this look it's only a quick look, like I said, okay? But what I do recommend, okay? You should know this. If you don't, go and check it out, okay? HTB Academy, Hack the Box Academy. And um, they have this course now, this uh, pathway for bug bounty hunting, okay? And um, bug bounty hunting, it's not OSINT related, let's say. It's, it's not, topically, it's not about open source intelligence, but just understanding bug bounty process even just the fundamentals of it can help us to understand how the how our computer how the browser interacts with the servers what kind of data it's sending and receiving and sometimes that can help us to gain additional elements additional data to help us with our investigations so like i said it's not specifically topically open source intelligence based but it's definitely definitely an additional um, skill set that you can add or to your toolbox okay and definitely one i recommend and um, but if you're interested in osint itself okay be sure to contact us okay and be sure to drop me an email justin at eusecca.com or you can head to our website eusecca.com forward slash osint osint 
and if it loads okay here you'll find the information about our OSINT course we also have it available online so you do not this is for a four-day classroom based one at our headquarters in Poland but we also have it online okay and um, so you can contact me via email justin at eusecca.com that's j-u-s-t-i-n at eusecca.com okay um, so I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you learned something new and like I said if you have any questions drop them or if you want to see us cover something or any questions about anything drop a comment but make sure to like and subscribe it really helps us to um to encourage encourage me to get out there and put some more videos up okay so have a good day guys and yeah see you next time I ain't close doors, I'm a fool for your life.